Please be seated. On the, the court is now back in session. And again, the chamber sees the floor to notice defense to continue putting questions to the witness, Mr. Dutman. Do you have the floor, counsel? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, good evening again, Mr. Dutman. Yes. Um, I would, um, with your permission, like to move away from um, your 1990 article and focus more on your, on your visit uh, to Democratic Kampuchea in 1978. Um, of course, we all read your report. Uh, would you be able to tell us um, so many years later, in general terms, what your experience was uh, during your trip in December 1978? You're asking what my was, I don't get the, what your question is. Uh, my question, Mr. Dutman, is what, what you now, today, um, remember from your trip. Uh, as I said, of course, we all read your report, but would you be able um, right now to, to, to tell us what you remember from your trip in 1978? Well, I remember being threatened, and I... Uh, uh, um, I, um, I can remember having a conducted tour of, uh, of, of Phnom Penh, oh, of the whole country, actually. And uh, my d description of that, I must have written it at the time, but I, I read a 1990 article that I wrote was based on what I saw in 78. And I... The... Actually, there are two parts to my recollection of the 78. One was the conducted tour, which was, to me, uh, pretty unsatisfactory. But the other one was the... Uh, the uh, physical uh, threat I, uh, after the uh, meeting with Paul Pod, and uh, I recall that as a t terrible experience. Mr. Dudman, I would, I would like to ask you some questions on um, uh, the attack against uh, Malcolm Caldwell uh, some later, uh, at a later point in time. Um, I, would, I would like to ask you now a few questions on, on your trip itself. Um, you said on the one, you said that it was to a certain extent unsatisfactory. Um, however, I've seen in your report um, that you also said that you had uh, the ability uh, to gather significant uh, information and also plenty of opportunity for observation. Uh, uh, would you be able, after so many years, to shed some light on what you meant when you said that you had an ability to gather significant information and that you had uh, also plenty of opportunity for observation? I don't recall that uh, statement. Did I? Are you saying that I wrote that I, I had plenty of chance to find, get information? 
yes, as, as a matter of fact, I have these words from, from your uh, 79 report that you had um, both an ability to gather significant information and also uh, plenty of opportunity for observation. So, again, my question is, would you be able now at this time to expand a little bit on this? I, I really have no recollection of uh, uh, what I meant by saying that and what information I got. I, I wrote what I could at the time, but I don't recall those making that statement that I uh, had such access. Um, Mr. Duckman, I... I now, that's the... That's the 79 article. I don't have that right in front of me. Well, I do have it over. Um, Mr. Duckman, I, I realize that you hadn't been able to uh, read your, your New York Times op-ed beforehand. Have you been able to read before your testimony, your 79 report, or uh, were, you know, were you not in such a position? I, I, I don't remember the article. I, and I, uh, I, if you want, could we print it out so I can have it? A print? It, it, uh, I, I've got it here on the screen, but it's hard reading. So, um, would it be correct if I said that you have not been in a position to reread your January 79 article recently? I haven't I haven't seen it for many years, and I, I I don't remember what the point of the article was. Um, maybe, Mr. Dutman, we're, we're mixing up two things. Um, I started asking you about an article in the New York Times that you wrote, but now I'm referring to the report that you made in January 1979 relating... Yes, I see it on the screen. I see it on the screen here, but I have not reread it, and I don't have any recollection of what was in it. Um, I understand. Um, then, if you allow me, I will read... Um, the specific paragraph uh, from the article to, re to refresh your collection. Um, Mr. President, E3 slash 3290, um, English ERN 00419207. Um, Mr. Dutman, this is uh, the second page, and I will read it to you. Uh, it says as follows. Um, while the visit amounted to a conducted tour with strict limits with strict limits on conversations. Do you have it, Mr. Dutman? So I will read it to you again. It's um, it's um, on, on, on page three of this document. It says, while the visit amounted to a conducted tour with strict limits on conversations with ordinary Cambodians, 
and no opportunity to speak uh, with any but a few top government officials. There was plenty of opportunity for observation in tours of 11 of the 19 provinces. Um, so here you have your words that there was plenty of opportunity for observation. Now, do you remember uh, you wrote that and would you be able now to give us some more information as to why you wrote that? Sure. Uh, I can recall that we were very much limited and couldn't speak to anybody, but uh, I, I kept my eyes open and uh, on this tour, and I wrote what I could see. And uh, I don't know how else to answer your question. Um. What, I'm, what I suppose I'm asking for is whether, despite restrictions, you were still able to see enough uh, to make a, uh, a full report on the situation in Democratic Kampuchea. I, I don't know that I ever said that it was a complete or full report on what was going on there. Uh, the whole thing was limited, as I said. I wrote what I could find out, but I don't ever think that I know everything and can learn uh, everything about what I, where I am. Oh, this is... Uh, a little bit further in your article, you, uh, Mr. Dutman, you wrote, uh, and allow me to quote again to refresh your memory. Uh, despite, yes. despite the restrictions the Cambodians placed on our activities, we were able to gather significant information about the new Cambodia for the first time since the communist victory of almost four years ago. Now, I'm, inter I'm interested in the word significant information. Would you be able now to recall what you meant when you wrote significant information? I don't recall. I, I don't know what significant information I was thinking of. Um, I'm, I'm thinking out loud now, uh, Mr. Dutman. Would it make sense if um, you would have the opportunity uh, tomorrow uh, to have a look at your 1979 report, um, refresh your memory, uh, and that I could ask you some, or other parties ask you some more detailed questions? Would, would that be an idea? Uh, I can look at it right now and answer questions, I think. Um, Maybe, Mr. Dutman, I, I should interrupt you because it's actually it's a quite a long um, article that you wrote. 
Um, I don't think you'll be able to um, fully read it within the limited time that we have. Um, maybe I just read a very small excerpt to you and then ask you if that refreshes your memory. Um, on the next page, English page 4, um, English ERN 4019208. That's the first um, paragraph up. It says, um, and I quote you, Mr. Dutman, at the same time, um, the physical condition of life may well have improved for many peasants and former urban workers, possibly for the vast majority of the population um, as the regime claimed. Um, this is a quote from your report. Um, would you be able, um, Mr. Dutton, to expand on this uh, using your recollection? Well, that was an informed guess of my part that uh, there might have been some improvement. I, I just wrote what I saw. Um, let me maybe ask a different set of questions. Do you remember how you wrote your report at the time? Um, did you uh, use your notes uh, that you made during your trip? Yes. Do you still have your notes of that trip? I didn't get that last question. Do, do you know whether you still have in your possession the notes that you took during your trip? No, I don't. You don't know whether you have them or you don't have them anymore? I don't have them. Do you remember uh, Mr. Dutman taking photographs of your visit? I'm sure I did, but I don't recall doing so. Um, and, and I understand correctly that you wrote your report um, for the uh, St. Louis Dispatch. That is correct. Do you remember? I, I didn't understand that. Uh, you, you wrote your report um, for the St. Louis Dispatch. Is, is that correct? Yes. Um, and do you remember whether there was any uh, discussion with your editor or other people uh, before finalizing your report? I don't recall any. I don't know. I sent it by telegraph, I guess, uh, from, uh, from Cambodia. Let's see. Did I deadline that? Let me see. I don't remember where I wrote when I wrote that. Uh, if I ever had returned to uh, Washington or St. Louis, or whether I wrote it from the scene, I don't know. But I don't recall any discussion over it. They, I think, it appeared as I wrote it. 
Um, I understand, Mr. Duffin, it's a, it's a very long time ago, and I, I apologize for asking uh, too many details. Um, I understand it's, it's difficult remembering. Um, maybe let me turn now to not the details of your report, um, but what, would, what, what do you remember? My question is, what would you remember um, from one of the last nights um, when uh, the three of you um, were attacked by gunmen? What do you remember? I can remember being awakened during shots. And uh, I went across, uh, I was on a second story uh, room, and I went across the hall to Malcolm Caldwell's room and uh, I discussed with him what we thought was going on. And uh, he, um, uh, we decided to, we didn't know, and we would stay in our rooms and hope that it all blew over. I started it back, but then a young man came uh, uh, heavily armed, came from the back of the floor, uh, and uh, at some point, well, I, th I think he, he, at once a point, he pointed his gun, his pistol at me and fired a shot and uh, missed me. But I ducked inside my room and slammed the door and stood to one side. And then there were some shots that came through the door. And uh, then I tried to get under the bed, and it was too low, but I kind of got in behind it. And after maybe two hours, I... I, I heard some other shots, too. And uh, then after maybe two hours, I um, uh, there was a knock on the door, and uh, a, uh, the diplomat, Cambodian diplomat, uh, Tune Prasit, uh, was there. And he said that uh, uh, Miss Becker is all right, but uh, he asked if I was all right, and I said yes. He said Miss Becker is all right too, but uh, Mr. Caldwell has been killed or is dead. And uh, he asked me to come out and take a look at the body. And I did, and uh, at the, he was lying, obviously dead, uh, with a gaping wound in his chest. And across, that, uh, he was inside the room, but on the threshold of the doorway uh, was this, uh, it appeared to be the same young man who had threatened me. Uh, and he was dead, too, in a pool of blood. And uh, we, um, Becker and I t t took a very, sh I think maybe that same day, we took off to go to uh, uh, China and then on to the United States. Uh, taking uh, Caldwell's body with us. Um, thank you, Mr. Dutman, for, for this vivid account. Um, do, do you recall um, more words or, or more conversation with Tune and Prasit as to the why um, and reasons of this attack on, on, on the three of you? I remember there was a lot of guesswork. I, I, 
we didn't know. Um, to, to refresh your memory a, a bit, in, in your report uh, from 79, you called it, uh, and I quote, a terrorist attack on the three of you. Do you recall why you used the words uh, terrorist attack? I don't. Um, were you somehow able to uh, to give us an educated guess as to who might have been responsible uh, for this attack? I've heard various theories, and I really don't have an opinion. Were these various theories that you heard at the time, or much later? Uh, at the time, even. And I've heard things since, but uh, mostly at the time. And do you remember whether one of those theories was more convincing than the others, the ones that you heard at the time, or is that too long ago? Uh, actually, I don't recall which was most persuasive. Um, I, I would I would like to read um, an excerpt from a book which um, you might not have read, but I would like to put it before you and then ask your reaction, uh, if that is all right with you, uh, Mr. Dutton. Um, Mr. President, this is a document E3-4202. Uh, uh, English ERN 0075-7538. French ERN 00849451 and Khmer um, 00858363. Um, Mr. Dutman, this is an excerpt from a book uh, of somebody called uh, Ted Sambat, and he writes about um, the reaction of both Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia uh, about this event. So I'm quoting now from this book and I, I would like to ask your reaction. Is that okay, Mr. Mr. Dutman? Yes. Um, at the end of 1978, uh, Pol Pot decided he wanted the Khmer Rouge uh, to finally have some publicity and he invited three Westerners to visit Phnom Penh. Foreign correspondents Elizabeth Becker and Richard Dutman, along with lecturer Malcolm Caldwell, came to Phnom Penh for a 10-day strictly supervised visit. The night after their interviews with Pol Pot, Malcolm Caldwell was shot dead in the middle of the night. Elizabeth Becker, who wrote about that visit in her book when the war was over, said the murder of Caldwell was an attempt to embarrass the Khmer Rouge regime. Nguyen Chia said he was woken up that night by Pol Pot around 3 a.m to let him know that Caldwell had been killed. Nguyen Chia was shocked. At the time, tension was rising with Vietnam and Pol Pot worried that this was a tactic to damage Cambodia's reputation. Pol Pot said this was because of carelessness, but he didn't say who was at fault, Nguyen Chia said. We were very sorry about this because we allowed him into the country, so we had to protect him. We were not stupid enough to shoot a foreigner. 
I saw this as an enemy tactic to give us a bad name. Um, end of quote, Mr. Dutman. Reco recalling the events and, and the various theories, uh, would you be able to comment on uh, this passage from this book? Well, it's a plausible explanation, but I have no way of knowing if it's true. Um, correct, uh, Mr. Dutman, but does it somehow refresh your uh, conversation that you had at the time with Tun Prasit? With whom? Uh, with Foreign Affairs um, official Tun Prasit. Does, it, does this excerpt yes. refresh your memory? No, I don't recall any conversation with June Prasit that bore on this. Um, th thank you, Mr. Dutman. Um, I would like now uh, to go back in your, during your visit uh, a few days earlier, and that is your interview, or the interview that, the both, that both of you had, um, uh, Madam Elizabeth Becker and you, with Paul Pott. Uh, do you recall this interview? Uh, I do, but I wouldn't call it an interview. You would rather call it a lecture or, or a speech? More a lecture, yes. Uh, do you remember anything specific um, about this um, lecture? Yes. And, and, and what, what is it that you remember? I remember Paul Potts saying repeatedly that the, uh, uh, that the Vietnamese were going to invade Cambodia. And uh, he said that again and again. And uh, I, if I remember rightly, he said that uh, uh, he thought that uh, with the help of the United States, uh, they would Cambodia would uh, throw them back. Um, do you remember anything else? Do you remember what he said to you about um, the objectives of Vietnam, the goals of Vietnam invading um, Cambodia? Uh, I don't. He spoke of an invasion. Um, do you remember any other details of this interview? No. Um, Mr. President, a request. Um, maybe not um, now, but if I would have some time tomorrow, I would uh, actually like Mr. Dutman to listen to an excerpt from this interview. It's a seven-minute excerpt, um, and when playing this excerpt to Mr. Dutman, I was hoping this would, in fact, refresh his memory. Um, the relevant excerpt um, we have uh, written out literally, so we would have that for you. Um, it's a I realize a bit late request. However, the interview is on uh, the interface and uh, it has been notified. Um, I could do it now, but then um, we would go beyond 10 o'clock. So that's my, that's my worry. So I'm at your hands as to what to do with this interview.
Council question. If you do it now, how long uh, will it go beyond 10 o'clock, including the questions you are asking and the answers? Um, uh, the, 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 the excerpt itself is, I believe, around 9, 10 minutes, 9 or 10 minutes. So that would bring us to um, 5 minutes to 10, and then, of course, some, some additional questions. Um, so it might be safer to do it tomorrow if that's uh, because the, the additional advantage of doing it tomorrow is that I would be able to send you a literal uh, um, translation or not a trans translation but a literal um, transcription uh, of what has been said and you would still be within what you discussed about sharing your time with Kirsten Pang's team I, I'm looking very kindly uh, to uh, Euh, très gentiment, euh, Madame Fence et Monsieur le Président, je. George Fence and Mr. President, I would need 40 minutes as far as the case on Pan team is concerned. That is to put questions to Mr. Dudman. If I understood you correctly, we have two hours, 20 minutes shared, or rather, says Council, two hours 40 for both defense teams. So if uh, uh, Mr. Kope uses two hours, I'll see how 40 minutes left. President, the Deputy Co-Prosecutor, you have the floor. And just a couple of points. We, we did receive a, a transcript, or what was described as a transcript of this tape my other question would be, I, I'm assuming uh, the tape is in Khmer. Uh, are, will, it, will it be technically um, uh, feasible to play this original tape in Khmer and for the uh, uh, witness to hear both the tape and, and the translation at the same time? But, but it seems to me we've already received a transcript, uh, and I, I would think it would make sense to play the, play the excerpt now if we're able to do that. Um, it is what you, what you hear on the on the tape, uh, Mr. President, is the voice of Pol Pot uh, in Khmer, and then it's directly translated into English by, I presume, Tiun Prasit. Uh, so we would be able to play um, the tape uh, or the excerpt right now, uh, because we have both languages, except of course for the French language. However, um, I did revisit the tape. Uh, yesterday quite extensively and I believe that the transcript is not in entirely accurate so I would like the, the court and also Mr. Dutman to benefit from literal words because sometimes Mr. Tune Prasit uh, s is speaking with a quite heavy French accent and is difficult to understand. While, me meanwhile if I might, may suggest, Mr. President, uh, I will just finish up my last uh, questions and then uh, we, it, might, it might be more beneficial to do it tomorrow. Um, uh, I apologize, Mr. Dutman, for this um, short intermission. Um, so you heard, correct, you heard it that, we, um, that I would like to, uh, to let you hear the interview that you took together with Elizabeth Becker of, of Pol Pot and revisit that issue tomorrow. Um, now I would like to ask you just some questions about uh, the preparation of your trip. Um, do you remember how um, you prepared for the trip uh, to Cambodia in December 78? I didn't understand the question. Um, my, my question, uh, Mr. Dutman, was do you remember how you yourself prepared, prepared you yourself for the trip? What did you do before going to Cambodia? For instance, did you speak uh, to officials of the State Department? Uh, did you 
in any, any other way prepare yourself for your trip? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember in detail. I'm sure I spoke to a lot of specialists about what I should look for. Uh, do you remember that uh, right before your trip, uh, U.S. Congress uh, was having was holding hearings in relation to the tensions between Vietnam and Cambodia at the time? I don't recall. Do you recall ever speaking to a State Department official uh, who goes by the name of Douglas Pike? I know Douglas Pike. I knew him. I didn't... Uh, I, d I do recall speaking with him, yes. Do you, do you, Mr. Dutton, recall speaking to him about the tensions between Vietnam and um, Democratic Kampuchea? I don't. Um, do you remember reading a document called Black Paper uh, before going to Cambodia? I do not. Um, if I refresh your memory and, and tell you that Black Paper was a, a, a document issued by uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Democratic Kampuchea outlining uh, what was believed to be the reasons for Vietnamese aggression. Does that ring a bell? It does not. I don't remember that. Um, do you remember that right before your visit uh, to Cambodia in 78, um, that Vietnam had, in had entered into uh, a military agreement with the Soviet Union? I don't remember that. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dutman, for answering my questions and the uh, being patient with um, my, my questions to you. Thank you very much, sir. President, today's proceedings have come to an end and we will resume it tomorrow. That is Tuesday, 31st March 2015. And tomorrow, the, tem the Chamber will continue to hear the testimony of the witness, Mr. Richard Dutman. And let me confirm, tomorrow testimony will uh, commence at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. And Mr. Richard Dutman, the Chamber would like to thank you for your time to testify as a witness. However, your testimony is not yet concluded, and you're invited to uh, again testify tomorrow. Uh, commencing from 8 o'clock at the uh, local uh, time in Phnom Penh. And the Chamber also would like to thank Mr. Uh, Todd Lowell and Mr. Jason Barrett for your assistance provided to the witness. And again, we would like to invite you to attend uh, tomorrow's uh, proceeding while we hear the testimony of Mr. Richard Dutman commencing at 8 o'clock uh, in the morning uh, Cambodian time. 
security personnel, you are instructed to take the two accused, uh, Mr. Anunji and Kee Sumpon, back to the detention facility and have them again attend the uh, proceeding before 8 o'clock in the morning. The court is now adjourned. Oh.